Counters are simple yet very useful components in VHDL. So counters are, um, they do what you would expect them to do. They just count up or down, uh, but they are very useful because you will find in many applications that you need to use counters um, to manage the address ports of memories. This, in my experience, has been like the uh, most common use of counters. Counters can sometimes also be used to um, uh, like um, um, get the movement of data um, synchronized through some pipeline or like um, provide some information to a state machine. They're usually just used to count cycles uh, or to update the uh, address port of a memory that we are reading from or writing to. So in this video, I'll show you how to declare and write counters in a predictable way so that the hardware that comes out is, um, is well behaved. So this is the most uh, you know, uh, versatile way to write a counter. This is a feature rich counter uh, in a lot of ways. It has a reset, it has an enable, it can count up or it can count down. So if you look at it, it's a, it's a process because a counter by definition is gonna be a sequential element. So a counter basically consists of a register to uh, store the value of the count uh, and an adder to uh, add up or add down. And so um, it has to be declared within a process. And counters are one of the main exceptions to the rule about not mixing arithmetic and registering in the same process. So when I talked about pipelining, I said keep the arithmetic outside the process in a combinational uh, in uh, uh, in concurrent statements and keep the process just for registering this is an exception because we know what counters do we know how they look like and it's pretty predictable and so uh, this is a process with a sensitivity list that contains only the clock and the reset and so obviously the reset here is an asynchronous reset and I say obviously because it exists in the sensitivity list. So even before looking inside the process, I know that the reset is gonna be uh, asynchronous because if it was synchronous, it wouldn't have been included in the sensitivity list. It's not wrong to include it, but it's just um, you know unnecessary. So this is an asynchronous reset that uh, sets the value of the counter to zero. Uh, whenever we uh, assert the reset. Again, use the uh, syntax others equal to zero to avoid stating the uh, size of the counter uh, register, which is called counter out explicitly. This keeps the design scalable because it allows you to change the size of the counter register and thus the uh, number that the counter counts up or down to. And so uh, it's, always, always a good thing to have an asynchronous reset for any register, including and specifically the counters, because you want to be able to know, to have a known state for these counters and to have this known state be independent from the clock or from the state machine. And then um, when we have a positive edge of the clock, which is uh, defined by this condition, if the counter is enabled, and here obviously the enable is synchronous, which is why it's not included in the sensitivity list, then if uh, some control signal called count up is equal to one, the counter counts up. If uh, count up is not equal to one, then the counter will count down. Uh, notice that I'm using else here, not saying else if count up is equal to zero, just to avoid the creation of an implicit latch uh, because we don't want to create a latch in this case. The only storage element we have here is for counter out, which is the register and which is declared in a way that we, uh, we know will result in a well-behaved positive edge triggered register. Because enable counter and count up are control signals that are synchronous, they don't need to be included in the sensitivity list. So um, let's look at this counter, for example. Uh, this is um, a subset from the uh, old from the from the other counter. This is a counter that allows us to load a value into the counter register. And so, um, if this control signal called load counter is equal to one, then counter out takes some value called counter in, which we provide as an external input. Otherwise, the counter is counting up. 
And so the value stored in the uh, counter register is either provided uh, from some external input or it is provided by taking the old value and adding it to one. And so you can think of loading the counter, allowing us to load the counter as basically a programmable reset. So we're not resetting the counter to um, a, a constant value of zero or a constant value of anything. We are resetting it to a known value that is provided from the outset. Except that when you have load values and when you have uh, load enables like this, you usually keep them synchronous rather than asynchronous like the asynchronous reset we just saw. So going back to this counter, we you, you can get subsets from this counter very easily. Like for example, assume that you know that your counter is always going to count up. You can actually change the syntax here by removing uh, this else condition, actually removing this if statement as well, or you can do something else. You can hardwire uh, the count up signal to one when you are uh, instantiating this counter or when you are instantiating the uh, uh, wrapper. In that case, the synthesizer will be able to figure out that this counter is always counting up and it will, um, it will actually replace it with a standard cell that performs only counting up. Uh, if you don't need the enable signal, you can hardwire the enable signal to one, uh, or you can remove the if statement. Now, all I'm saying is you don't actually need to change the syntax in order to obtain a simpler counter from this. You can always obtain a simpler counter by hardwiring some of the inputs, and the synthesizer is always smart enough to know what you mean by this. So if you look at this counter, this is a counter that is going to count up until it reaches the full value of its register, and then it will just roll over to zero. So if it's a three bit counter, it will count up from zero, 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 all the way up to one, one, one. And then when it tries to add one to the one, 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 it produces an eight, which is an overflow, and it will go back to zero, zero, zero. And so this counter is just going to count up to whatever value uh, is the full range of its register, so it's always going to count up to a power of 2. Now, if you, if you assume that you want to count up to a number that is not a power of 2, um, then you have to use a structure similar to this. So here we also have a, um, a, uh, an asynchronous reset, and then when we have a positive edge for the clock, we test the value of the counter. In this case, we see if the value of the counter is equal to 5. And if it is equal to 5, then the counter is reset to 0. If it's not equal to 5, then it is incremented. And so this is a counter that counts up from uh, 0 to 5 and then goes back to 0. This function, conv standard logic vector, is going to convert this integer value, the first argument, into a standard logic vector, and the width of the vector is the second argument. So this is going to return simply the value 101. And so this counter is going to count up from 000 up to 101. As soon as we see 101 on the next cycle, we will update to 000, and else we are going to increment. So you can see that I'm using the others equal to zero uh, syntax here to keep this, um, this uh, counter scalable. On the other hand, I'm using specific numbers here, and this goes against the scalability rules that I talked about before. But this is just for illustration purposes. In reality, what you should have as arguments for the conf standard logic vector uh, function should be generics, and these generics should be passed up to the uh, to the uh, design where the counter is instantiated and they should be passed up and up and up until they reach the highest level wrapper, at which point they can be declared as numbers. And so the five and the three have to be uh, generics. You shouldn't actually declare them as uh, simple numbers. So one last thing about counters is that counters can and often are declared using variables. This is one of the uh, ways in which variables can be safely used and where the uh, uh, results of synthesis are very predictable. And so you see here that we are declaring a, uh, a variable called counter out, and this variable has a range, 
and then this process is going to count up whenever the clock is called. Uh, one problem with having variables uh, in counters is that the variable exists only within the process that calls it. So if you need this value of the counter to be used somewhere else, specifically if you need it uh, to be used with, um, with concurrent statements outside processes, then you are better off declaring the counter using signals.